Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on Windows Server operating systems. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R620 server. Do us a favor, if you find this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. So um, let's start with the, uh, the different compatible Windows operating systems uh, for your R620. So we'll go ahead and we're going to put up a list right now. Uh, it's going to show you everything uh, top to bottom. Um, and uh, 2016 is what we recommend if you're using the R620. And that's what we're going to actually go ahead and install and show you step by step instructions. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Windows Server 2016 onto your server. Firstly, we're going to go ahead and show you how to install Windows Server locally onto your server. And then secondly, we're going to create a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine using VMware ESXi. So in order to get started for both of these methods, we're, we are going to need a Windows Server 2016 ISO file. To find this file, you want to navigate to Microsoft's website, and we'll have a link in the description down below. Once you get there, it'll look like a screen kind of like this. It'll say, please select your Windows Server 2016 download. And we want to go ahead and download the English version. So you want to go down to where it says ISO downloads, click on 64-bit edition. This may take a little bit of time to download, so we'll be right back. Next, what we want to do is create a bootable USB drive using a program called Rufus. So what we want to do is go to Rufus's website. You can just type in Rufus into Google and it should be that first search result. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to where it says download and you want to click on that first option. Might get a little ad so you can just press the X. The program downloads fairly quick so once it downloads you want to go ahead and just open it up. Once Rufus is open you want to click on select right here and this will open up our file explorer. And in the File Explorer, you want to select the Windows Server ISO file. Once you do this, you want to go to the bottom of the window and click on Start. And you may get a little message, you just want to press OK. Um, and do note that this will destroy any data that's on that USB drive. So make sure you're using a drive that's either empty or a drive that has data you don't mind losing. If you're OK with that, then we can just go ahead and continue. And this is going to start the process of creating that bootable USB drive. So we'll just go ahead and wait this out and we'll be right back. So Rufus is done. So all we got to do now is we can eject that USB drive from our computer. And then we can go ahead and plug it into the server. And then we can start the Windows Server 2016 installation. Before we get started with the installation, there's just one little thing we got to do before we can start. So what you want to do is power on your server, and during post, you want to press F2 so we can enter System Setup. Once we get into System Setup, you want to go ahead and click on System BIOS, and then you want to scroll down to Boot Settings, and in Boot Settings, change the boot mode to UEFIE. Once we did that, we can go ahead and exit and click on Finish, and then OK. And then we can back out again, and then our server is going to reboot. So during the reboot, you want to go ahead and press F11 so we can go into the Boot Manager. And in Boot Manager, we want to click on UEFI Boot Menu. So in this menu, we want to select the USB drive that represents our bootable USB. And once we click on that, it's going to immediately start the Windows Server 2016 installation. So from here, it's pretty straightforward, just following the steps that are in front of us. It may take a little bit of time to actually load that installation, um, but the overall installation is fairly easy, and I'm going to go ahead and walk you through all of the steps. Once it finally loads, we'll be prompted with this window right here. And here we can choose the language. So we're going to stick with English. So once we have that selected, we can go ahead and click on Next, and then click Install Now. It's going to say the setup is starting, so just give it a little bit of time. So this screen, it's going to ask us for which version of the operating system we want to install. So at the very bottom, it gives a brief description of kind of which, what each version has. 
Um, we're going to go ahead and choose the standard evaluation desktop experience. You don't have to do this one, but this one's great um, if you need a GUI. Um, so we're going to go ahead and select that one. Right here, we can accept the license terms. So we want to go ahead and click on that little checkbox. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and click on Next. And here we'll be prompted to do either an upgrade or a custom installation. If you already have a version of Windows already on, installed onto your server, then you can go ahead and do the upgrade. Um, but for us, we're, we want to do a fresh installation, so we want to do this custom install. This screen is going to be where we choose to install Windows onto. So we have one drive installed to our system, so we want to go ahead and select that drive. And this will basically be the installation destination. Once we do that, it's going to start copying the Windows files and start installing the files onto that drive. And from this point, we're, we're just going to wait. So we'll go ahead and fast forward here. So as you can see, it's finished. So our system is going to restart. So we'll just let it do that. Once our server reboots, it's going to boot back into Windows and it may take a little bit of time for it to get back up because it's still initializing everything and getting everything ready. But once it's finally done, you will be prompted to enter in a password. This is going to be the password of the main user account within the operating system. Um, it's going to be the, the password that we're going to use to log in in just a minute. So you want to make sure that this password is secure but also something you can remember. So this can be whatever you want it to be. Looks like I accidentally didn't meet all the requirements. So you just want to make sure that you have uppercase, lowercase letters and symbols, um, and you should be good to know, go. So we're going to go ahead and re-enter it back in. And once we do that, we are pretty much done with the Windows Server installation. It's going to finalize our settings and once we do that, we will be at the Windows Server lock screen. So to unlock, we just want to do Control-Alt-Delete. Once it unlocks, it's going to prompt us to enter in our password. So we just want to put that password that we just created. And there we have it. We have successfully installed and logged into Windows Server 2016 on our server. This is how you do the local installation, and it's fairly similar for pretty much any operating system you do, uh, but this is how you locally install Windows Server 2016 onto your server. So now we're going to go ahead and show you how to create a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine in VMware ESXi. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is just make sure that you boot your server up into uh, VMware so we can access the web interface. Once we do that, you want to go to a laptop or a desktop that's connected to the same network as that server. And then we're going to go ahead and type in the VMware IP address into a web browser, and that will bring us to this login screen here. We want to go ahead and log in. And if you don't have VMware ESXi installed onto your server, we have a video that we made previously in the series that you can go ahead and check out. So once we get logged in, we can go to the left-hand side of the screen and click on Storage, and then click on New Data Store. So bring up this menu right here. So first, we can just go ahead and get started by clicking on Next. Now we can give our data store a name. Once we typed in the name, we can click on Next, and then we can go ahead and click on next again. And right here's just a little bit of a summary of our data store. So we can go ahead and just click on finish. And then we'll go ahead and click on yes. So we have cr successfully created our data store. As you can see, our data store is displayed right here, lab DS. What we want to do next is click on our data store and then click on data store browser. And then click on create directory. This is going to be the folder that we put our Windows Server ISO file in, so we're just going to call it ISOs. And once you create that, click on the file and then click on Upload. And then we can select our Windows Server 2016 ISO file. This is going to go ahead and upload our file, so it may take a little bit of time, so we'll just go ahead and fast forward. So once it finishes up, we can just go ahead and close this window. Then we can go to the left-hand side of the screen and click on Virtual Machines. 
create slash register VM. And go ahead and click on next. And then now we can give our virtual machine a name. So this can be whatever you want it to be, but I do recommend it be somewhat descriptive so you know uh, which virtual machine it is. So we're doing lab win serve 2016. Next, we want to select a guest OS family. So that's going to be Windows. And then for the OS version, we're going to do Windows Server 2016 64 bit. Once we select that, click on Next. And then we can click on Next once again. And on this screen, we're not going to change anything, but then this is kind of where you can change. You can change how many CPU cores you want to allocate, how much memory or disk space you want to allocate towards this virtual machine. For Windows Server specifically, I would recommend allocating a little bit more resources towards it because it is a little bit more of a resource intensive operating system as compared to like Ubuntu Server, which is all command line based. But once we do that, and go down to the very bottom where it says CD DVD drive one. You want to click on that drop down and then select data store ISO file. And then we want to select our data store and then the Windows Server 2016 ISO file. And once we have that in there, we can click on next and then just review this screen right here. Make sure everything looks good. And every, if everything looks good, click on finish. And this is going to create our virtual machine. So from here, all the hard work has been done. We just got to go ahead and open up our virtual machine in the virtual console. So we wanna go ahead and click power on. This is going to turn the virtual machine on. And then once we do this, we can click on console and then open console and new window. As you can see right here, we have a view of the Windows Server 2016 OS. We're going to be faced with that same installation that we did earlier, so if you need to refer back to the steps shown previously in the video, I recommend doing so. So we're going to go ahead and just fast forward through this whole installation, but that's pretty much the heart of it, right? We created our data store, and then we created the virtual machine. We run that same installation that we did earlier, so it's pretty straightforward, and really this is the easy part right here. This may take a little bit more time. Once you actually do the installation, you just want to wait for all those files to transfer over. But that's pretty much how you do it. You can set that password and then type in and log in. So we're going to be faced with that same installation that we did earlier. So it's going to be the exact same set of steps. So if you need to refer back to previously in the video just to see how to do this again, I recommend doing so. That's it. That's how you create a Windows Server 2016 virtual machine in VMware ESXi. Pretty straightforward video. It can be a little bit more complicated if you're a beginner, but if you just follow the steps shown in this video, you won't have any issue. So if you found anything in this video useful, go ahead and leave a like and smash that subscribe. And if you're interested in purchasing a custom built server, we have plenty of them in stock. Go ahead and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Take care.